Hi, this is Simon Judd. This is another extract from our Insights packages, and this one concerns nitrogen removal. So, we're back to our regular classical sewage treatment process. There's the biological tank on the left, and there's the uh, secondary clarifier on the right. So, the sewage comes into that biological tank. It's normally been through a primary sedimentation tank. This is a, a regular municipal wastewater treatment process. And the mixed liquor or sludge comes out of that biological process tank, goes into the secondary clarifier. The sparkling fresh water is taken out from the top of the clarifier and all the sludge sinks to the bottom. Now then, in the biological tank, we have air introduced in order to oxidize the ammonia to nitrate in the aerobic zone of the tank. But that biological tank also contains another zone which is fed from the, uh, the sediment, if you like, of the secondary clarifier. And those solids contain nitrate-enriched sludge which is fed into the zone, the so-called anoxic zone of the process tank. And within that zone, the right conditions are created to develop microorganisms which carry out this reaction, the conversion to nitrate, from nitrate to nitrogen gas. And nitrogen gas is pretty innocuous. So you effectively have a two-stage process the ammonia oxidation to nitrate under aerobic conditions and then the, ox the conversion of nitrate to nitrogen under anoxic conditions and that's simply because different microorganisms are developed to do different jobs within those two different zones and that conversion of nitrate to nitrogen is called denitrification and it removes nitrate but what it also does is slightly reduce the oxygen demand because some of the oxygen is taken from the nitrate in order to uh, carry out that process. So you need slightly less oxygen from the air in the aerobic zone. Now if you replace that secondary clarifier with a membrane separation process that then allows you to increase the solids retention time which increases the concentration of solids up from say about three and a half grams per liter to anything between eight and ten grams per liter uh, for an MBR. But what it also does is extend the solid retention time to allow slower growing microorganisms to develop. And those uh, microorganisms which are slow growing happen to be the nitrifiers, the things that uh, convert ammonia to nitrate and actually the denitrifiers as well. So you tend to get more nitrifiers developed in an MBR process than in a classical um, activated sludge process such that you get rather better nitrogen removal for an MBR than you do with the classical process.